and uh, substantially. And so the heat, the heat of the surface could affect fluids in the... In the chronicles of space exploration, an Apollo 11 astronaut breaks the silence. The moon, shrouded in mystery, conceals a truth that's eluded us all these years. Get ready to uncover the shocking revelation of what really happened on the mission to the far side of the moon. In the annals of history, Neil Armstrong's immortal words echo through time. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Such words, uttered in the face of cosmic grandeur, resonate profoundly. Can there be a more apt phrase to capture the gravity of that moment when humanity first set foot upon the lunar surface? As the world held its collective breath, Buzz Aldrin followed in Armstrong's steps, forging new pathways in the lunar soil. Together, these intrepid astronauts embarked on an unprecedented exploration of this alien terrain, while their fellow traveler, Michael Collins, maintained his solitary vigil in the Lunar Orbiting Command Module. The Moon, a celestial muse that has captivated human imagination for eons, was a realm once explored with limited tools and boundless wonder. Our ancestors, bereft of modern technology, mapped its phases, deciphered lunar eclipses, and wove tales and myths around its ethereal glow. They understood the moon's sway over tides and its role in shaping calendars, even attributing lunar influence to matters of the mind. The moon. Good, good, good job, better. Uh, uh, Molly, Molly. <laughs> Why are we on a slope? You okay? The moon's mysteries, long the subject of fascination, were unveiled step by step. Unmanned probes, sent aloft in missions like the Soviet Lunar and the American Ranger and Surveyor programs, unraveled the moon's secrets, bestowing upon us vital insights into its geology and conditions. Each discovery deepened our yearning to place human footprints upon its dusty surface. The urge intensified during the Cold War era, when the race for cosmic supremacy between the United States and the USSR stirred national pride and technological ambition. In 1961, the United States embarked on the monumental Apollo program, a venture of unparalleled ambition that aimed to land a man on the moon and return him safely to Earth by the decade's end. The journey was one of enormous cost, involving rigorous stages of development, testing, and training. Suborbital and orbital flights, rendezvous and docking maneuvers, lunar orbiting and landing simulations, and extravehicular activities were but stepping stones towards the ultimate destination. The zenith of the Apollo program was the historic Apollo 11 mission, which commenced on July 16, 1969. As the world gazed skyward, three intrepid souls, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins, embarked on a celestial odyssey. Upon reaching lunar orbit, Armstrong and Aldrin bid farewell to Collins, who steadfastly manned the command module, orbiting high above. Then, on July 20th, 1969, at precisely 2.56 a.m. GMT, the world held its breath as Armstrong descended to the lunar surface, imprinting humanity's first steps on this alien realm. Aldrin joined Armstrong in this lunar ballet, and together they spent two awe-inspiring hours collecting samples and conducting scientific experiments that expanded our understanding of the cosmos. Their indomitable spirit culminated in the planting of the American flag, a symbol of terrestrial audacity, transcending the bounds of Earth. After their lunar sojourn, the astronauts reunited with Collins in the command module, commencing their homeward voyage. On July 24, 1969, they splashed down in the Pacific Ocean, bringing their extraordinary mission to its triumphant conclusion. In their return to Earth, Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins embodied the audacity and tenacity of the human spirit. They had achieved the seemingly impossible, realizing the dreams of countless generations. Michael Collins, despite his relative obscurity, carved a brilliant path in both career and personal life. Born in Rome, Italy to a US military officer, he lived a nomadic childhood, moving across borders and cultures. His journey led him to St. Albans School in Washington, DC, where his remarkable journey would begin to take flight. At St. Albans, in the fertile soil of curiosity, Michael Collins cultivated two passions, aviation and astronomy. In 1952, after graduating from the hallowed halls of West Point, 
he charted an uncharted course by choosing to soar with the Air Force. As a fighter pilot in the crucible of the Korean War, he navigated the unforgiving skies, carving his name among the valiant. Subsequently, Collins undertook a transformative odyssey at the Air Force Test Pilot School, stationed at the storied Edwards Air Force Base in California. Here, amidst the rumbling engines and sleek fuselages, he became a modern Daedalus, testing a dazzling array of aircraft, from nimble fighter jets to majestic bombers. In 1963, the cosmos cast its celestial die, selecting Michael Collins as one of NASA's chosen few. As part of this triumvirate of trailblazers, alongside Buzz Aldrin, he embarked on a celestial apprenticeship within the hallowed halls of the Gemini and Apollo programs. These endeavors sought to grasp the very fabric of the cosmos as they aimed for orbital flights and lunar landings, dreams hitherto the preserve of science fiction. Collins, the quiet maestro, embarked on his maiden voyage to the cosmos in 1966, steering the Gemini 10 through the velvety expanse of space. With fellow astronaut John Young, he executed balletic rendezvous with celestial companions and performed the ethereal dance of spacewalks. Yet it was the allure of the lunar siren that beckoned Collins, promising a cosmic waltz on a distant stage. Initially slated for the Apollo 8 mission, fate intervened leading to a medical procedure that briefly grounded him. But Destiny's hand was kind, for Collins was soon rekindled with the stars, designated to be a pivotal part of the Apollo 11 mission, an endeavor that would etch humanity's indelible mark on the lunar surface. In the constellation of lunar exploration, Collins assumed the role of the command module pilot, a designation that might have consigned him to the periphery, but by no measure rendered him any less crucial. From the vantage point of the command module, Columbia, he bore the mantle of a celestial shepherd, guiding and safeguarding the lunar module, Eagle, as it descended to the moon's surface. In the solitude of space, as Armstrong and Aldrin embarked on their historic lunar sojourn, Collins became the sentinel of the command module, steering the mothership with unwavering resolve. His task list, a weighty tome of cosmic responsibilities, included monitoring systems, maintaining lifelines to mission control, and preparing for the high-stakes rendezvous and docking maneuvers. As Armstrong and Aldrin ventured upon the moon's dusty expanse, Collins remained the unyielding conductor of celestial harmony, orchestrating the ballet of lunar module docking, a feat fraught with the peril of the unknown. In the vast cosmic tapestry, his precision was the needle that stitched together the fabric of their mission. His vigil transcended the mechanical. It embodied the cosmic soul of their journey. Alone within the command module, Collins ensured its systems hummed with life, nurturing the vessel that would be their conduit back to Earth. Yet his role was more than mechanical. It was also the bridge that spanned the abyss of space and time. As Armstrong and Aldrin explored the lunar frontier, Collins served as the conduit through which their lunar observations flowed back to mission control, a cosmic courier of scientific revelations. And then, in the hush of space, one aspect of Collins' duty bore a psychological weight few could fathom. As the linchpin between lunar explorers and mission control, he knew that, in the face of catastrophe, his voyage home would be a solitary one, a journey that rested upon his shoulders alone. With unwavering composure, Collins executed his duties with meticulous precision. Every maneuver, every calculation, and every communication were executed flawlessly. The monumental rendezvous and docking, a celestial ballet of risk and reward, bore the fingerprints of his expertise. In the tapestry of lunar exploration, Michael Collins wove an indelible thread of dedication and courage. His role was pivotal, his contribution immeasurable. With his steadfast guidance, the Apollo 11 mission achieved its historic triumph. In the critical trans-Earth injection, where the spacecraft's engines fired to depart lunar orbit, chart the course homeward, Collins's technical prowess and precision were the beacon of success. His journey through the cosmos was not one of footsteps on the lunar surface, but a celestial symphony, harmonizing the cosmic ballet that ushered humanity into a new era of exploration. So as we traverse the limitless expanse of space, let us pause and ask, in a mission of cosmic proportions, 
Can any role be deemed insignificant? Michael Collins, the unsung hero of Apollo 11, was like the mission's backbone in space. He wasn't walking on the moon like his buddies, but he played a vital role in making sure everything went smoothly. Imagine being in a spaceship circling the moon all by yourself for 21 hours. That's what Collins did. For almost 48 minutes during each orbit, he couldn't talk to anyone on Earth or the astronauts on the moon. It was just him and the hum of the machines. Being alone in space gives you a lot of time to think. What do you think Collins thought about while looking at the Earth and the moon from his spaceship? It must have been some deep stuff. When he was on the moon's far side, he couldn't even hear radio signals from Earth. He was the first person to see this hidden part of the moon. It was so quiet, like being in the middle of nowhere. This quiet place is perfect for astronomers because there's no noise from our technology. In 2019, a Chinese mission explored this area to study low-frequency radio waves. But beyond science, being in this quiet place gave Collins a special view of the universe. He must have seen things that very few people ever have. Instead of feeling lonely, Collins found peace in his solitude. Looking at Earth from space made him feel a deep connection to our planet. He realized how delicate and special it is. This feeling known as the overview effect made Collins want to protect the Earth. He wanted world leaders to see our planet from space so they would take better care of it. Space also made Collins think about big questions like why we're here and what our purpose is in the universe. His experience in space made him believe that the universe has a plan and isn't just random chaos. As he looked into the vastness of space, Collins asked himself, who are we? Where do we fit in the grand scheme of things? How can we make sure our planet stays safe? These questions made him come back to Earth as a person who cared deeply about our world and our place in the universe. In the quiet of space, Michael Collins found not loneliness, but peace. He discovered a connection to the universe, to Earth, and to the big questions that have always fascinated us. His journey was more than just a trip to the moon. It was a journey of self-discovery and a testament to the enduring human spirit. And that's it for this video. Please click the like and subscribe buttons down below if you found this interesting. To make sure you don't miss any uploads, tap the bell icon. See you in the next one.